Bodhi in the Brain, Part 12. How you doing, everyone? This is Morgan O'Smith here. Uh, just another segment of my upcoming book, Bodhi in the Brain. Um, a little bit of bad news, though. The book is not going to be coming out uh, in, in uh, what month are we in? February or March. This book will be coming out. It looks like it will be happening in May. So in the meantime, I'm just going to be putting out these segments, just talking about the book. Because there's so much in this book that can be that uh, to be covered, and um, I can go on and on and, and on for days in regards to the information in this book and how it uh, and how it uh, pertains to um, Unergy. Unergy is the program that I created back. Gosh, what year did I create this? Back in officially, I created it in 2010. In 2010, yeah, 2010 is when I officially created it. But of course, that was in the works from since 2006 um, when I when I came up with the idea and was putting it together. But of course, in 2010 is when I had a huge uh, breakthrough in regards to what, what I can, well, how I can make this more unique than um, than the other programs that are out there. So that was um, my, my thing. So what I did, of course, for many of you who already know, I combined uh, binaural beat technology or brainwaving te technology with uh, vortex-based mathematics, I found out that there was a link between the two. And so I found a way to combine the two together, the two technologies together. Um, but yeah, so that's how Unergy came about. So now that this has been put together, uh, many people have used it. Um, of course, not too many people have used it all the way through. Um, most people don't know the full potential of Unergy. But um, a lot of people have got through level one, level two, and there's people up to level five, actually, who have got to level five. And for those who don't know, there's at least 13 levels of energy, but there are levels, sub-levels after that, but there are 13 levels. So the highest that I know of so far um, is level five that people have got up to. Uh, of course, for myself, I've gone, I finished all 13 levels, um, but... The furthest that people have gotten to is level five, and just imagine what would happen when other people get to, like level ten, level uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and so on. So, but yes, but today what we're going to talk about though is the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind, and how it relates to the delta state. So, delta, for those who don't know, is one of the brainwave states uh, that we produce that. Uh, we have electrical, electrical activity that's happening within our brains and they happen at different states. So at the faster states, um, you have beta um, and faster than beta, you have like high beta. After that, you have gamma. After gamma, you have hyper gamma. And after gamma, you have lambda. And lambda is a brainwave state of uh, 100 to 200 hertz per second. Uh, but at the lower states, the slower states, I should say, so below beta, you have alpha, and then below that you have theta, and then you have delta. But we now know that it was even slower brainwave states below delta, uh, which are epsilon, um, the default network, uh, the, 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 the default mode network. Uh, why am I, so I feel like I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> and um, iota, and there are probably even slower ones than that. Um, so, but we'll, we'll focus on delta. Delta and below we'll focus on. So you have states of consciousness, which of course are, um, you know, you're in your conscious state. So as you're listening to me right now, you're in your conscious state. Uh, you're conscious of what's happening in your surroundings. You're conscious of what's kind of happening to you internally just to some degree. Um, internally, at least at least with the, the mind, subconsciously, um, or should I say subjectively, uh, you have uh, some awareness there. Um, and that's your conscious mind. But uh, there's actually a lot more happening than that. Um, and we're only, most of us are only aware of what's happening consciously. But there's also the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind can be looked at as the, the part of the mind that's part of the, the program, the programming that's happening that allows your conscious mind to do what it does. There's programming behind that and that's controlled by the subconscious mind. But below that, you have the unconscious mind. And of course it's called unconscious because you're not conscious of it. So. For those who study psychology, they would have a better understanding of the conscious mind, subconscious mind, and the unconscious mind. Um, there's a lot that is happening that that is happening in the unconscious mind more than anything else, more than the subconscious and more than the conscious. So, if you're able to, 
if you're the type that um, have experimented with uh, psychedelics or have done some shadow work, um, plant medicine, met up with a shaman and things of that sort, you may have had the opportunity to go deeper past the, the, past the conscious mind, past the subconscious mind, and, past, and, and into the unconscious mind, the parts, the stuff that you're not aware of. But what happens, you become aware of it. And within those realms, you may discover um, things that are very desirable uh, about yourself and things that aren't, that aren't so pleasant. And if you go deep enough, you can explore both. Uh, the, your, you can explore your impulses, which people will refer to as the id. You can, re, you can explore your impulses. You can see all the potential and everything that lies within these, these, these realms and, um, and how they make up who you are as an individual. So one has to be very courageous to go into these realms because when you go deep enough, um, you're going to find things in there that are not too desirable. And, um, and, but these are the things that haunt you even though you may not know it. So you may have some triggers that are happening in your conscious realm, but you don't know where the triggers are coming from. Well, all these triggers are in your unconscious part of the mind that you're not aware of. And you're probably not even aware of the triggers itself or you're not aware of the shadows uh, uh, that comes with that. So if you go into the Delta, which I just uh, talked about earlier, uh, the brainwaves of Delta, Delta is like a brain frequency of... Um, uh, what is it? One Hertz. So one and below, if you can say that, um, it's actually a little higher than that, but just say one and below. But once you go below one, you start to get into the Epsilon, uh, areas, you are tapping into, uh, where you have more access to the unconscious part of the mind, which is a very good thing. So what energy does, uh, especially with classical energy, energy and the second half of the, the the hour of the meditation brings you into the delta state where you have more access to the unconscious mind and when you have more access to the conscious mind when you expose these frequencies to um to the slower brain waves on a regular basis you start to uh, release any stuck uh unresolved material that is happening uh in that part of the mind in the in, in the unconscious mind which is really the majority of who you are as a human being so you can start to do a lot of clearing in these areas and this, and this is why energy is so good is because you can start to really go in there and start to really release a lot of the um, unresolved material that are, that, that are stuck in these in these uh parts of the mind uh and if you go even slower you have epsilon uh, and if you go into the epsilon which is uh, it goes into um the zero point 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. These slower brain waves, you can go even deeper into the unconscious mind. And this goes on and on down into what we call um, iota, uh, where you go even deeper. So a lot of um, emotional stuff can be cleared up there. Trauma can be cleared up in these areas. Uh, dealing with shadows can be worked on in these areas and so on. You can look at uh, the, the, all your impulses, um, all the stuff that makes up who you are. So all your desires, your impulses, everything lies in these areas where you can explore them and you learn to face them face on. Uh, and this is where I have a saying where I say, um, stare at your demons until they become divine. So again, I'll say it again, stare at your demons until they become divine. And by you facing your own fears, um, you become, you have to be a courageous individual to do this, but when you face your own fears, um, you'd start to overcome them. They no longer come up to haunt you because they only haunt you because they know that you're scared and then you're willing to, um, do whatever it takes to, to distract yourself from facing these demons. But once you face your demons uh, straight on face to face, um, you reach a, a whole new level of, uh, of your own spirituality, uh, when you're able to do so. So this is why taking these brain waves into Delta and below is, are very, very important. So I always recommend that people will challenge themselves and to, by slowing their brain waves, will have extra access to these areas so that you can heal, so that you can heal emotionally, uh, psychologically and spiritually. And this has a lot of benefit in regards to, uh, um, for those who want to become awakened, 
um, these uh, slower brain waves are very necessary, but also the fast ones too. So the ones above beta, which I mentioned before, was uh, gamma, hyper gamma, and lambda. Um, all these brain waves are important. Actually, every all your brain waves were important. So by clearing out all the stuff that is stuck within these uh, parts of the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, the unconscious mind, um, you have uh, more access to getting to the ultimate state, which is uh, what we call bodhi. Bodhi, um, B-O-D-H-I. So that's it for this week. Um, again, about the unconscious mind and the importance of that and what happens there and how we can explore them and how we can um, break free from a lot of the repressed material that is stuck there, which we all have, but we all can do something about it. And by doing something about it, we have to go down there and face those demons. And those demons can't hurt you. They can only scare you, but they can't hurt you. And once you face them dead on, you can reach the next step um, of your own personal evolution um, so that you can reach your full potential as what you are as a human being. But what you realize once you reach your full potential, that you're not even human at all. That's it for this week, everyone. This is Morgan O. Smith. Take care.